Hello and welcome to Stories of Success, a new YouTube channel that aims to tell the life stories of successful entrepreneurs and innovators from the first idea to the first million. This episode will be featured around Richard Branson, the high-flying billionaire adventurer behind The Virgin Group. In 50 years of business, he's been involved in over 400 companies and amassed a net worth of $5 billion through great branding and providing fantastic customer service. He also owns a few Caribbean islands, has received knighthood from the Queen, and has been featured seven times in the Guinness Book of World Records. But how did Richard Branson become so successful? That's what we're going to find out on today's episode of Stories of Success. Richard Branson was born on July 18th, 1950 into a middle-class family on the outskirts of London. He was dyslexic, but it wasn't recognised in the late 50s, so it was just assumed he was stupid. He had hardly read by the time he was eight, and was punished by the strict boarding school he attended for not performing better. He was, however, excellent at sports, being captain of the football, rugby and cricket teams. Branson always had that entrepreneur flair. When he was 15, he tried to sell Christmas trees by buying the seeds and preparing the land before planting them. Unfortunately, the local rabbits ate all his seeds, teaching him how important it is in business to protect your assets. Later on that year, he attempted to sell budgies in his local area. The breeding process went well, but the demand wasn't particularly high and he soon had a massive stockpile of them. One day, his parents told him that all his budgies had escaped, which brought an end to the venture. When he was just 16, Branson started his first successful venture. He created a magazine called Student, which was created out of Richard's frustrations with not being able to get his opinion heard on how the school was run, and just by issues faced by young people. He realised other students might feel this way too, and hatched a plan to launch an inter school newspaper. He started the magazine with his friend from school, Johnny Gems, whose talent in content creation complemented Richard's flaws stemming from dyslexia. It actually took Richard and Johnny over a year to produce the first issue of Student, which came out in January of 1968. It had significant circulation from the beginning, and they were able to print 30,000 copies using advertiser money raised through cold calling. He found that once he received one high quality interviewee, it was easier to get the next one, and the more good interviews they got, the more advertiser money they got. He managed to speak with some of the most influential people at the time, such as John Lennon of the Beatles and Mitch Jagger of the Rolling Stones, and ran the magazine for almost four years, bootstrapping cash to just about keep it going. He also created a student helpline, as he realised students needed somebody to talk to about their problems other than their parents and teachers. Nowadays, we just use the internet. The true audaciousness actually comes about with just those people who just, you know, have the pluck and the courage to say, screw it, let's do it. Um, I see, you know, I see a gap in the market, I see something that's not being done well, um, I'm going to give it a go. And they start their very first, uh, their very first venture. Richard Branson came up with the idea for a mail-order record company when he realised that despite the government getting rid of the rule that made shops charge the same price for the same things, no shop had started discounting records. He also realised that he had the perfect target market and a way to advertise to them through the student magazine, so it decided to be a great business opportunity. Virgin Records is helping hundreds and hundreds of um, young people throughout the country to get records at about six shillings cheaper than, or six to eight shillings cheaper than they would anywhere else. The name Virgin was apparently suggested by one of the girls working at the time, as they were all virgins at business. Somebody else laughed, you know, why not Virgin? Uh, we're all virgins and hysterical laughter all, all around. Um, and, and I suddenly thought, I, I am virgin at business. Um, you know, I might be virgin at other things as well. And, you know, why not Virgin? The company thrived throughout 1970, with Branson being just 20 years old. But it came at the expense of the student magazine, which was discontinued. The business did, however, hit a snag in 1971 when the post office workers went on strike. Obviously, they couldn't send records or receive checks, so quickly had to open up a store in London before they went totally broke. So Rich said, we have to find a shop, like within a week, and we did. We found a shop about a shoe shop in Oxford Street. The shop had more of a social vibe than the big record shops, with beanbags and music blaring, and the customers were encouraged to hang around and talk about the music. With the shop going well, Branson looked to expand the business, as he always does when he has cash. He decided to create what he considered the perfect recording studio. He found a large manor house in the countryside outside Oxford and got a mortgage using the record company's sales. From the manor, he set up Virgin Record Label, which looked to sign some new artists. The first signing to the Virgin Record Label was a man called Mike Oldfield. He created an unusual instrumental album called Tubular Bells, which was released in the May of 1973, along with three other albums by different bands Virgin had signed. After the release, they realised they could have something special on their hands. At this point, they had to make the decision on whether to license the manufacturing and distribution to a bigger record label and gain 60% royalties on sales, which is what most small labels did, or they could take on the cost themselves. 
Branson, with 14 record shops and his experience selling students around the country, felt that they could do it. If the record had flopped, Virgin would have been bankrupt, but if it was successful, they would keep about 80% of the profits. He said later about this decision, It was a bold move, but even then I knew it was only by being bold that you get anywhere. If you're a risk taker, then the art is to protect the downside. After a shaky start, the trap began to skyrocket up the charts, and by August it was number one. The record put Virgin on the map and made Branson a millionaire. He had just turned 23. From that point onwards, Branson continued to expand the record label, taking risks on bands like the Sex Pistols and signing several future stars. He also used his success to explore several other ventures, from nightclubs to films. One of those ventures was an attempt at a transatlantic airline after he decided, I, I hate traveling on other people's airlines and we can do it better. Virgin Atlantic would go on to be very successful after it nearly bankrupted him a few times and forced him to sell his record company. It's actually a really interesting story, and I hope to tell it in a future video, along with the rest of his amazing life. For now though, this has been the Richard Branson story, from the first idea to the first million. I plan on doing more videos like this for other successful people in the future, so if you have any suggestions for who you'd like to see, leave them in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and picked up some inspiration for how you can make your first million. Keep hustling guys, and maybe one day I'll be telling your tale on stories of success. See you next time.